Alright guys, uh, welcome uh, to episode 2 of uh, We All Had To Start Somewhere uh, with me, Kava Kasima. Uh, so you join us again on the uh, apron at uh, Donegal uh, Airport in uh, Ireland. And uh, uh, this uh, video we'll look at uh, a quick pre-flight of the aircraft, uh, starting up, doing our run-up and... Uh, finally taken off. Uh, so, uh, you join us at the aircraft, uh, Golf Charlie Alpha Victor Kilo, uh, on the apron. Uh, the aircraft's cold and dark, so everything's shut down. Uh, we've got the door open, ready to jump in. So, uh, join me in the cockpit and we'll get started. Right, so welcome on board, uh, everybody. So uh, just a couple of things to configure before we get going. Uh, as you could probably tell outside, we had the uh, chocks and the tie downs uh, still uh, attached to the aircraft. Uh, and she's been uh, uh, sitting uh, overnight, uh, all nice, safe and sound. Um, so we'll uh, get rid of the tie downs. We'll get rid of the chocks and uh, I think we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, so we still have the cabin door open. Uh, we'll keep that open for the time being. Uh, let's get rid of the EFB. Uh, right, okay, so uh, before starting the uh, aircraft, uh, we'll do a very, very quick uh, walk around. Uh, outside and uh, to start off with as we jump in we'll uh, go to the electrical panel down here we'll flip the battery switch on and what we want to do is we want to set all the various lights and the pitot heat outside uh, so what we'll quickly do we'll go battery on and you can hear the battery connected and the panel starting to uh, whir up. So what we'll do, we'll put the nav lights on, we'll put the landing light on, the anti-collision light on, the pitot heat switch, and uh, we'll also turn on the instrument lights in here just very quickly, just to make sure they did come on, which I think we did see them flash up. Oop, too far over there. And we'll roll that back down again. You can see them dimming. Right, so we don't need those for the time being. Right, so if we jump outside. Right, so. Starting on the right-hand side here. You can see we have our right-hand navigation light, which is this green light here. Behind that, we have our white flashing strobe light which is one of our anti-collision lights around to the back we have our red rotating beacon that's on the nav light switch uh, this uh, light is always needed when the aircraft is ready to be started or is unsafe to uh, approach uh, just gives a warning to anybody on the ground outside the plane to keep away because we're probably going to be starting our engine or our engine is running. Uh, on the back of the rudder here we have uh, our rear navigation light. Over to the left wing now. Our red port navigation light. And again behind that we have the left wing anti-collision strobe. Right, what we would also do while we're here with the electrics on, uh, on the left hand wing, uh, if you remember from my last video, this uh, little probe that sticks out into the air here, this is the pitot probe. Uh, and this is uh, what we use for measuring airspeed and uh, using this as well for uh, various other instruments such as the uh, altimeter and 
a vertical speed indicator. So this was what we used the pitot heat switch for. And uh, basically when you're in certain temperatures and that, the pitot heat will be on, which will warm this up and uh, prevent ice accretion inside the uh, inside the pitot head itself. Uh, which could be quite dangerous if we did have ice in there, as it would cause erroneous, uh, cause erroneous uh, readings on the instruments. Uh, so you would switch the pitot heat on to uh, get rid of the ice. Uh, the other thing here, uh, I don't know if you can actually see it very well, but uh, this little... Uh, let's see if we can find it. There we are. There's a little flap uh, just here. This is our stall warner uh, flap on the leading edge of the wing here. So if in the real aircraft, what you would do is you go around here, you'd have this little window open and you would just flip that little uh, flap up and you'd be able to hear the stall warner in the cockpit. Uh, so basically if you were going into a stall, um, the airflow would push that flap up and warn you of uh, an impending stall. Usually sounds about five knots above actual stall speed, so it gives you a chance to recover before going into a full stall. Uh, so that's that, and then we just come quickly round to the front and in the nose here, if uh, Bob here gets out of the way, uh, in the front here, this is our landing light. Uh, so generally used below a thousand feet and especially in the circuits and uh, takeoff landings etc okay right let's jump back in the cockpit we'll uh, switch all these uh, lights off because uh, we're end up chaining the battery otherwise so pitot heat anti-collision landing light and we'll turn off the nav lights for now battery comes off and you can hear it wearing down Right, so, right, okay, so use a slightly different camera view, but we use the drone camera view. Uh, okay, so, uh, starting the walk around on the aircraft then. So if we start on the Warrior from the, I really should uh, sort of controller out for this. Right, okay, so. On the warrior then, so from the door, uh, we just check the condition of the door. The painted surface on top of the wing here, this is the uh, bit you walk on to get into the cockpit as I said in the previous video, there's only one door on this aircraft uh, for entry and exit of uh, pilot and passengers. And uh, very important that you just stick to this uh, area to walk on, if you walk on any of the uh, other bits of the wing skin, you're likely to deform uh, the wing and uh, that would end up causing problems f uh, for maintenance of the aircraft, it need to be replaced. Uh, we have here the step up onto the uh, wing, just make sure that's all nice and snug and secure. One thing I did forget to do on the inside of the cockpit was to make sure the flaps were uh, lowered so what we'll do we'll just quickly lower them down there we go right and so what we would do from here is we would check the flaps you give a good tug on it just to make sure all the linkages and that were uh, all nice snug and secure make sure the flap won't come off in flight and uh, just check in the gap there, make sure there's no birds or any foreign objects lodged in there that can uh, affect the uh, movement of the flap. So coming along the back of the wing. So the next Uh, control surface here. This is the right hand aileron. So this uh, on the aircraft uh, controls our roll. Uh, so what we use to uh, 
basically start turns. So we'd roll the aircraft. You would check to make sure you have full and free movement. You can move these by hand. You would also check inside the inside the cockpit to make sure the uh, control columns are moving. We just have a quick look. Uh, so we go down on the aileron. So this would in flight lift the right wing. And again, check. Pull it up. We check to see that the control columns move to the right, which they do. Put that down. Just check general condition of the uh, aileron. There's no deformities in it. It's nicely attached. Okay, so coming back along the fuselage, we check in, make sure the fuselage skin is nice and smooth. All the rivets are in place. Uh, so basically, she looks good there. We'll come round to the back of the aircraft. Look at the horizontal stabilizer, which is this here. On the PA28, this is an all-flying stabilizer. Uh, if you compare it to a Cessna or some sort, which again has the horizontal stabilizer, but you'll find it has just the uh, elevator uh, control surface on the back of the. Uh, stabilizer as I say this is an all-flying one so the whole surface moves so if we pull the stabilizer up and we'll check the movement we also have this anti-servo and trim tab on the back here uh, check the linkage so we're fully back at the moment so this would pitch the nose of the aircraft up and back down to neutral and just give it a push forward and that's full deflection forward and uh, check the servo tab again okay back to neutral that's all nice and su uh, snug and secure up onto the tail then we check the condition of the tail it's nice and uh, secure check the probes at the back here condition of the light, the light's good, that light's good. Uh, you wouldn't generally be able to uh, test the movement of the rudder on the ground, uh, but you make sure, give it a good pull left and right to make sure it is all connected. Uh, so it is attached to the uh, rudder pedals inside, uh, which are attached to the nose gear steering. Uh, and because the aircraft is sat on the ground and not moving forward, you can't generally move the uh, pedals whilst on the ground. Uh, but in, as we're in a simulator, I can show you that movement of the rudder. So there we go, the full left, that would be full left rudder deflection, our neutral, and then back to the right, back to neutral. So the rudder's good. So again, checking the left-hand side of the aircraft, and uh, once again, checking uh, the flap, make sure this left-hand side flap is nice and secure, uh, which it seems to be. Uh, again, the aileron. So check the movement of the aileron, and you can see through the cockpit window the movement of the control column to verify that. Uh, same check as we do on the other side. Checking to make sure in the gaps here there's no birds nesting or any foreign objects in the flap. Checking the security of the flap. The aileron. Pulling it up and down make sure you've got full and free movement. And checking the linkages and everything. Okay, so around to the outside edge of the wing, just checking the general condition, make sure all the rivets are in place. Uh, navigation light, strobe light, they're all nicely attached. Uh, leading edge of the wing, the most important bit of the wing, I would say. Uh, make sure there's no deformities, nothing's been hit on the leading edge, uh, like any bird strikes or uh, stones or anything. Uh, to that matter. 
uh, making sure all the rivets will be in place. Uh, coming down to the part of the wing here with this cap. This is the left hand side fuel filler cap. Uh, aircraft has two tanks, one in each wing, and this is the very top of the left hand wing tank. So basically this area here is your fuel tank on the left hand side. So um, if you were to take this off you'd have a tab in there and the tab would indicate a full tank. So come in down. There we go, we have that we have that pito tube here. Tie down, flat linkages, and we'd also check the uh, condition of the uh, landing gear. Make sure it's all nicely attached. We've got tire tread. Check the condition of the brakes. Check the oleo leg. Make sure there's no oil stains. Uh, down there, so it's got a nice seal on it, and uh, plenty of uh, shock left in it. Uh, just next to the fuel lake here, where this is our fuel drain for the uh, left-hand tank, uh, you would hold a little beaker up to that, just to drain a little bit of fuel out, just to uh, see if uh, any water was present in the fuel. And as you look at it, water would flow to the bottom of the tube. Uh, 100 LL av gas is uh, slightly blue in tint, so you'd be able to tell very easily. Uh, check at the wing route for the attachments. Uh, if you were at the, going back to the end of the wing there, one little check would be just to grab hold of the wing and just pull it back and forth uh, just to see that there's no movement. Okay, coming around to the front then, we have the uh, fuel drain uh, in the engine compartment. Again, same uh, procedure as the other wing uh, tank there we've just looked at. Same thing, you would drain a bit of fuel out of there, make sure there's no water in, in the fuel line there. Coming down, checking the nose wheel uh, leg for all the linkages. And uh, the uh, oleo leg condition of the tyre, make sure there's no cuts or uh, flat spots on it. Uh, you would usually find as well on the real aircraft there'd be like a, a small painted line on there from the uh, uh, wheel onto the tyre and that would show any uh, creep of the tyre uh, to say the tyre's moved on the rim. Uh, obviously on this aircraft it doesn't have it but uh, we would usually check that anyway. Checking the condition of the uh, antennas under the uh, under the aircraft. Right, okay, so coming around to the front of the aircraft then. Uh, checking the condition of the propeller. Checking the spinner, make sure that's attached properly. Uh, so the propeller condition, make sure there's no chips, cracks, or anything uh, that could affect propeller performance. Uh, if you do have any major chips out of it, it could potentially cause uh, an imbalance. These propellers are balanced to give the most comfortable. Uh, so as it spins you don't want uh, an imbalanced propeller giving you all kinds of vibrations and uh, potentially failing your engine. Uh, inside the cowling here, so we have the two air ducts. Uh, this is an air-cooled engine, so air would enter these uh, ducts here straight over, to this, over the cylinders. Just behind uh, the inside of the duct uh, behind there, we, you would check the uh, alternator belt, uh, so the alternator for power and the uh, charge on the battery uh, is run directly from the uh, uh, drive shaft, just behind the cowling. Check the condition of the landing light and the various other ducts and uh, exhaust uh, pipe down here. Okay, so. Come around, you would take the cowling up just to check under the bonnet. Uh, you would check general condition of the engine, check the fuel dipstick, uh, make sure you have the correct amount of fuel in the aircraft, and 
make sure there's been no uh, fuel leaks, etc. Again, coming around to the left hand side of the aircraft, lead and edge, make sure all your rivets are in place, checking your left hand main landing gear, fuel drain on the right tank, again, same as the left tank, tie down, checking all your linkages for your flaps. So, coming up, again, we have another uh, fuel filler cap here, same as on the right hand, uh, the left hand tank, as we looked before, trim, uh, tab in there, when fuel's up to that tab, you have a full fuel uh, tank there. So, coming along the leading edge of the wing, again, same again, making sure the condition of the wing, make sure all your rivets are in place, there's no deformation of the aircraft skin, around to the edge, give a pull on the wing, make sure the wing's attached nice and snugly. Navigation strobe light, again, attached nice and snugly. Uh, so we've done the back end of the wing. So that's a very, very quick check of the aircraft uh, from a pre-flight inspection. Uh, view. So now we'll head back into the cockpit and let's get ready to go flying. Right, hey guys, we're back in the cockpit then. So um, what we'll do, we'll uh, bring up our checklist. So uh, we've done the pre-flight interior, we've done the pre-flight exterior. So before engine start check, we'll uh, Pull this uh, up. So, okay, let's get this door shut then. Uh, lovely. Right, door shut. Latch one, latch two. So, the door is nice and shut. Uh, we're open the storm window, ready for engine starting. Right, okay, so uh, before engine starts, check. This is using the uh, in game. Uh, checklists which were provided with the uh, warrior so we'll, uh, we'll use this uh, they may be slightly different from uh, real life checklists but uh, we'll use this just uh, as it's uh, easier in game right okay so first uh, item circuit breakers. Uh, we see we've got one popped here for the DME, so we'll just pop that back in. Just check in, make sure none of none of the breakers are out. So breakers are all in. Carburetor heat. This switch here is to cold. So off is cold, on is hot. So carburetor heat cold and fuel tank and we come down here to the left side wall and uh, at the moment fuel's off so we'll go to the fullest tank uh, they're both equally loaded at the moment so we'll just get to the left tank for now right so engine starting right so as i said the aircraft's been left overnight so it's been sat here on the apron for several hours so it will be a cold engine so we'll select the cold engine uh, right, okay, so throttle, we're opening it half an inch, so there we go, it's about half inch. Battery switch on, alternator on, nav lights are on, fuel pump is on. So this is the electrical fuel pump. So the, the aircraft has two uh, separate pumps. We have an engine driven pump and an electrical fuel pump. So this is the electrical one we've just turned on. You hear it whirring in the background there. Uh, we use that for takeoff, landing and uh, switching the fuel tanks between left and right. 
just to make sure we still have uh, consistent uh, fuel pressure. Uh, right, mixture. Mixture rich. So now we've opened the fuel to the engine. We see the fuel pressure has now gone up a little bit. I did hear the uh, note of the fuel pump change a little bit uh, as it's got fuel going through it now. Right. So. Alright, let's just check out those items that we did do already. So. Battery. Alternator. Nav lights. Fuel pump. Mixture. Okay, check around. Propeller area is clear. Right. Sorry, Bob. I'd step back if I were you. Unfortunately, standing right in the wrong place. Uh, okay. Propeller area. In real life, you would shout through this window. Clear propeller. And uh, then you would start. So, down to your key. Flip through the magnetos, both, and... Engine starts. So... Let's come back to both. So we're running on both magnetos now. So we have a successful start. Magnetos on both. Adjust the 1200. Very slightly out. There we go, 1200 RPM. And oil pressure, taking the oil pressure has risen to the green. There we go, that's checked. So the oil pressure then, if uh, you don't get any rise in pressure within 30 seconds, you make sure you shut the engine down, it potentially means you don't have any oil in the engine. Uh, and that will be to avoid uh, damaging uh, the engine. Right, let's just close that down a moment. So, we'll just get... Oh, he decided to move. <laughs> right, okay then, so... Let's go ahead and configure the avionics. Right. So then, we'll look at our... Transponder, we've got 7,000 set in the transponder window here, that's the non-conspicuity uh, code uh, that we use uh, for VFR. So we'll flip transponder to standby. And uh, we check all our radios are on. Uh, ADF is on. Give these lights down a touch. Right, heading indicator. Oh, hang on, forget the altimeters. So what we'll do here at the moment then, because we're not looking at uh, talking to air traffic just yet, we'll uh, set our uh, altimeter here to the QFE, which is the height above the airfield. So we'll wind the altimeter around to read zero. Uh, which Makes the QFE here one zero one two, so it's just just below standard uh, pressure setting. Heading in, take a. Uh, we are looking uh, two zero six, I would say. Oh, I don't want to use the HSI. Uh, so let's put that back to change that back to the DI. 
So I've got the DI here. Just make sure to swing that round. 206. So we always make sure this is lined up with the magnetic compass. Right then. Right, taxi area. Wraps up. Taxi area is clear, so we go idle power. Release the parking brake. And she wants to just roll forward very slightly, so we'll, uh, we'll get her around and then we'll test the brakes. So we're facing out towards the taxiway, we'll just check the brakes. Brakes work. So both pilot and instructor, if uh, need, if instructor is on board, we we'll both check their own brakes. So left rudder, horizon remains level. Right, uh, left turn, right skid, and compass has followed the turn. Just check it again round to the right. There we go, compass. Right turn, left skid, and compass again. Right, okay, so what we'll do here then, we'll do our run up checks here before we do our takeoff. So we'll go back to 1200 RPM. So make sure we still have airflow going over the engines. Right. So that's our uh, taxi and check completed. So transponder will be had set. Outer meters we're now on QFE. Heading indicator is set. Still remains aligned. Uh, taxi area is clear. Brakes were released. Uh, brakes were tested and flight instruments we checked. Okay, so. Next thing is our run-up check, so we, this is what we do before we take off, just make sure the uh, aircraft is properly uh, uh, ready for flight. So what we'll do, we have parking brake set, not too sure what the wind is doing, we've got a wind sock. Anybody see a wind sock? Wind sock. There we go, down the end there. What's the wind doing? Uh, very light blowing across the runway, so we're more or less into wind anyways. Right. Okay, so what we do then, parking brake set, make sure the aircraft is holding. We'll just close this window up, get a bit of that wind noise out of the way. Right, so, make sure it's set to rich. Throttle set to 2000 RPM, so we'll pull this forward until this needle reaches 2000. So here we go. Right, so we set about 2000 RPM. We come back to Myra Magnetos. So at the moment, we're running on both, so we'll flip. To the right, we're watching the tachometer at the same time. So for each magneto, we do not want to have more than 150 RPM uh, decrease. And between both, we don't want any more than 50. Otherwise, we cannot fly. Right, so... On the left, it's about a 90 drop. Back to both. about the same. Okay. Uh, over to the far side here, vacuum check. Just make sure the uh, needle's sensibly placed. Uh, so we're about 
inches, so that's about normal. Uh, so the vacuum for the three instruments here, your attitude, your direction, and your turn coordinator. So that's to uh, power the gyros. Uh, oil pressure and temperature, oil pressure, still in the green down here, oil temperature has come up nicely, it's nicely warming up. So uh, ammeter is the next check, so our ammeter down here, uh, so for instance let's put the pitot heat on, should get a slight rise, so that's fine, we don't need the pitot at the moment. Carp heat is cold. Fuel pump going off. Checking the fuel pressure. It's not changed. And then idle check. So bring the throttle all the way down. And do a, make the engine go all the way to idle. So we don't want to leave it here too long because we're end up fouling the plugs. Okay, that's about right. Okay, so back to 1200. Okay, so that's our run up done. We go to the before takeoff check list then. So let's see, we have. Battery on, alternator on, strobe lights. So that'll be our anti collision lights on this aircraft. So on, landing light on, fuel pump on. Hear the fuel pump in the background again. Fuel selector will we'll check the fullest tank. So we have left hand fuel tank here, right hand fuel tank here. You might say, just looking at it quickly here that the right tank is the fullest but if you have a look very very closely I like this little feature on this aircraft is you've got two different types of gauges so obviously at some point this right hand tank has been uh, this right fuel uh, gauge has been replaced it looks a bit newer uh, so looking at the tanks and just above 10 gallons in each tank so We'll leave it on the left uh, tank for now then. Uh, as we've not really used very much. Okay, so just checking the engine gauges. So all temperature, fuel pressure, oil pressure. All within the green. Tachometers in the green as well. Right then. This is the before takeoff checks complete. Takeoff checks. So, we'll just have a quick look at this before we go then. So, on the takeoff roll then we'll release the brakes, the throttle will go full and we'll use the one, two, three uh, set in for that. So, we'll go full power over one, two, three. To make sure we don't get any uh, vapor lock or uh, uh, to make it nice and smooth. SPD indicator, we'll make sure that's uh, rising. So the gauge over here, and uh, we'll rotate at about 60, uh, 65 knots. And today we're going to climb at 79 knots. And uh, for that, with full power, we'll use pitch to control the airspeed. Uh, so that'll be our initial climb. Well, 78 knots here, apparently. Uh, we're not using any flaps today, so we don't need to worry about that. Alright, we'll put that on the cruise checklist then. So, what we'll do then on this departure we will climb up to 2,000 feet uh, level out and uh, that's where we'll uh, 
stop this video for today. Right, so let's get ourselves lined up on the runway. So engine back to idle, brakes off. Outside, make sure there's nobody on finals, there's nobody there, and can't see anybody down there. We won't backtrack the runway today because it's quite a nice long runway, and uh, we don't need very much of it. So, just to the left of the center line here. So, lined up on runway 03, uh, just checking to make sure that the DI is aligned with the magnetic compass, uh, about 027, that's about right. Okay, just checking, we don't have any annunciator lights on there, make sure they're all off. Right. Off we go then, so brakes are released. So what we'll do, as we're rolling down the runway then, we'll need a very slight right rudder to counteract the uh, wash from the prop. So that will cause a left yawing tendency. So here we go then. On the throttle, one, two, three, there we go, full power. Slight right rudder. Keeping the aircraft down the centre. Looking for our 65, oh, bit of wind there, 65, and as we climb up, nose on the horizon, keeping the wings level, just trimming out the force. So we're nicely at, uh, we're around about 80 knots here. Have a nice climb. Coming up through 700 feet above the aerodrome level. Remember we're on QFE so it shows above aerodrome level. So coming up through 1000 feet. So we can take off the fuel pump or take off the landing light. Make sure we keep the aircraft trimmed. And we are airborne. There we go, there's our runway down there. Right, so we've got up to 2,000 feet. So 2,000 feet, we'll push the nose down onto the horizon. Or looking for a, a horizon, we want to set the picture at about here. The aircraft is going to accelerate, so we'll bring back to cruise power about 2300. There we go. So, what's happening now? Just bring the yoke up so you can see we're having a whole quite a bit of full pressure here to keep the aircraft uh, level. So not climbing or not descending. So what we're going to do then, we are going to go down here and we are going to trim the aircraft. So what I've got set, I've got I've set a couple of buttons on my joystick. Forward trim and rear trim. So we want a forward trim at this moment in time 
until such point as you don't need any force on the joystick or control column. Just keep the aircraft nice and level, and just adjust it as necessary. Right, so that is your first takeoff in the Warrior. Uh, so we'll call the video that. That's the end of this uh, episode of That's the end of this episode of uh, We All Had to Start Somewhere. Uh, join me in the next episode. We'll take a look at doing a few manoeuvres, learn how to climb, descend, turn the aircraft, uh, basic effects of controls, and then we'll return to Donegal for a landing in the following video. Anyway, uh, from me, Kevin K. Simon, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like the video, please do like and uh, subscribe to the uh, channel and hit that notification bell for when I release the next video. Uh, anyway, from me, happy flying and I'll see you in the air sometime soon. So for me, bye-bye for now.